Welcome. I really appreciate you spending some time with me. This is a live event, but I am going to start this off with a brief video just to supply some background. I am a classically trained painter. I don't have a lot of images from my undergraduate days or when I was trained, but I do have this image and this video here of some recent works that may nod towards that. And I'm gonna go back and forth chronologically during this brief video because my examples are of course most recent, but they do hark back to an earlier time when I received my instruction in education in the arts. This is perhaps the most recent example. I was in an artist residency program in Northern Iceland. Perhaps my most celebrated series of recent, however, involves what I refer to as the most precise paintbrush in my toolkit, which is the camera. I've been shooting on location with dancers recently making these spectacular visions. This shot took all night. <laughs> I was almost eaten by wolves but it was worth it. And I've done a lot of work up in Jacob's Pillow, which is marvelous. I exhibited part of this series in the country's busiest airport at the time. And I've gone from picture to motion picture with my film premiering at the Philadelphia Fringe Festival. In recent years, I have been commissioned to make large scale steel sculpture that's gone in the ground. And I've made digital sculptures originally as a maquette, but as we entered the pandemic, I was happy that I was honored with a solo exhibition that had been planned in the virtual space. This was a wonderful show. I gave a TEDx talk titled From Paralysis to Muralist, and I still play Frisbee professionally, so that wraps up that intro. So let's go back to the beginning of sorts. This is one of the earlier works in my career. I was a teenager when I made this. Uh, for scale, there's an outlet there, which I was always, I've always felt lucky that that was included in this photograph from years ago. And you may be able to see the folds in it. This is a portrait of David Livingstone, and I made it with reproductions of maps of the territories that he explored. So it's kind of cyclical. You can stand back and see his likeness, and you can walk up close and sort of read the map. Also, you might see the folds in it. I, my entire undergraduate degree show folded up and fit in the glove compartment of my VW microbus. So I've been working with maps for a long time, initially the Explorer series, but then also a series of skulls like Homo habilis, where I used maps of sites where they were found to create the skull. Incidentally, in the bottom right corner, that's Jeff Hendricks. He sat for me while I did his portrait in this style. I mean, I took photographs, but then I worked on it afterward. And here we are, we were friends for a great long time. And it gives me so much pleasure to say that today, I wasn't gonna date this video, but today we are in a show together in Manhattan, along with a bunch of other artists. And I'm just so happy about that. But since I am dating this, I guess. <laughs> I also want to say I'm completely heartened by the fact that friend Emma Amos, you see here, is currently at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which is just a walk away from my studio. And right across the street from my studio, another influence from this era, Joan Semmel, has a big show. So that's pretty amazing. But moving on. As I said, I've been collaging maps for quite some time now. So here is another skull, the black skull with the sagittal crest. There, there's my own sagittal crest, I guess. Uh, and then I did a series of kings and queens using territories where they ruled to make their likenesses. And that gets us to the solo show that I'm about to walk you through. This Jersey City solo show also features gods and goddesses. This is Venus. This is Mars, and this is Diana. The king and queen are decades old. Diana and the rest of the gods and goddesses are only a couple months old. Craving color, I started working with maps in a different fashion. I was still working with the X-Acto blade, and I'm gonna get into the seven inch tall work in a moment. But I'd like to focus on the 40 inch tall works. This was my preferred format. These are indeed cut precisely. This is what it looks like when it's flat and mounted. And here's a process shot where you can see I'm working with the X-Acto knife 
taking a very long time to cut each one of these. So I've been doing this for a while. This is an early on shot. And this is, I mean, you can't really tell, but this is more recent. The playing card size, as I refer to them, they have been widely received by many different galleries and museums in different cities. People enjoy them, young, <laughs> very young here, and old, all ages. Uh, people of different stripes really seem to enjoy this series. The larger works have been collected by collaborative workspaces, corporate spaces, hotel lobbies, public environments, as well as private collections. And one last image of a work that sold at the opening, and that gets us to the solo exhibition put on by Drawing Rooms at Devora. One last thing, though. I do want to mention something associated with the show are my NFTs. I'll talk more about the unlockable content later, live. But for right now, I want to refer back to when I said I would talk about this image later, which is now. Uh, there is one cut image mounted on Matboard and hanging in the gallery, but associated with that are these NFTs that are also for sale as well. Hi, I'm Scott J. Whitman. We're going to take a brief gallery tour of my solo show. But before I do, I want to make sure I thank James Pastorino and Ann Traubin of Drawing Rooms in Jersey City and also Tal and Ayal Schuster of Devora in Jersey City. I think both of them in a separate but complementary way really have winning strategies of how to exhibit art in spaces where Jersey City can walk right in and take advantage of the moment. And let's do that right now with any further ado. I want to start with the large king and queen because these are really my two alpha works. This in my mind is what started it all. Uh, king and Queen of Hungary, and I use maps of territories they ruled, the, the provinces, to make their likenesses. I did this years ago. This is not only the alpha work in terms of material, but the thought process of making portraits and likenesses using maps of territories where, in the King and Queen case, where they ruled, but I, you'll see I did explorers using maps of where they explored, Clark and Lewis. Um, but I'm already jumping ahead here. I want to say that these works are the only works of mine that are not framed, only works of mine of the series that are not framed. So they're mounted on 100% archival paper, acid free, and they roll up and can be transported to different museums and galleries pretty easily. So I like that about these works. Moving on, since we're gonna keep this a very quick, brief walkthrough, this is great. So if those are my alpha, those are my original two pieces that I made in this long body of work. These behind me are gods and goddesses. I have a series of kings and queens originally, the explorers I mentioned, I did a series of skulls like Homo habilis and Homo erectus and I used maps of sites where they were found. And I did a large body of work of cherubs using base maps. And that was a real shift because I started using maps based on the aesthetic quality. And I liked how base maps look like marble. And I started making cherubs from Renaissance sculpture. Now my newest series, and I made these right before the solo show. I'm working with Venus and Mars and Juno and Neptune. And I have more works on the way from the Gods and Goddess series, sub-series. I would like to mention that along with these base maps, this show is in Jersey City. And I think you can see right here, Jersey City. The reason for that is because of this map right here, which I'm gonna unroll. I got this years ago. Okay, through the magic of editing, I'm back. Uh, years ago, I went to city planning in Manhattan. Manhattan. And I got a lot of base maps from their flat files. 
He said it was a funny story. I, I went in, this is years ago before the internet, and I went in and I asked them if I could look at some maps. And they said, yeah, sure. What area, what area are you looking for? And I said, I'm not really sure, which they've never gotten before, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, anyway, long story short, we had a long conversation. And when they realized what I was doing, they said, oh, come on behind the counter. <laughs> so I was like opening every flat file I could get my hands on. And then finally landed on this one. And I've just hung on to it ever since. Happily so, because little did I know I would be making these works years later, a couple of decades later. So that's these works. I want to move on to my color silhouette series. When I make these larger works, the other ones were cutting and collaging. Oh, I should go back and discuss my process, shouldn't I? Let me go back and discuss the process. Let's go right back to Venus. And There we go. Okay, so, so a lot of people ask me about my process, which I understand. And I always say it's an additive process, I'm adding on. I'm classically trained as a painter and I think of these quite often as painting, sort of the intersection between painting and printmaking. I'm a double degree printmaker too. And clearly the maps are prints, um, but, this is a one of a kind work. I'm not printing it out. I'm working layers and layers of maps on it. So when I got here today for the gallery tour, I just grabbed a few scraps off my the floor of my studio beneath where I was working on this. And there is no table. I work right on the wall, just like this. And I think that this, this might be, this might be uh, the actual eye. Could be, I'm not quite sure. But, so I will, I will cut an area of the map out that I think I need and apply it directly. So here's like another shard and I obviously have different tones. And I just find a spot where I need, let's say I want to cut a strand of hair. I just cut and voila. There we go. There's a little piece that I will then put on into the hair. Now, what I haven't said as of yet is that every piece of map, and I have reams of maps of different tones, every piece has a backing that I've put on it, which takes hours. There we go. And it is, I peel it right off. And what you've got here an adhesive you know, map that can be glued onto the major work. Now, I would put it permanently on there. I would press it down hard. For this purposes, I just kind of tapped it so I could take it right off. But that is the general idea. And, you know, what's, what are some of the other questions I get? I don't know. It takes, it takes a good long time. <laughs> to make these. It's the other works that I think are, people are more interested in how long they take. So let me walk you over here. Okay, so we're gonna situate right here. This looks pretty good because I can stand here and then I can talk about the work and the work itself is pretty large. I generally work in different scales when it comes to this body of work. I work in sort of like rib cage size, then I also work in playing card size. I'm gonna get to those in a minute. They're right across the way here. Uh, but when I was working additively with the black and white big portraits of gods and goddesses, here is a series where I just make one cut, which is one long silhouette cut. And the big works, this is pretty big work, uh, it takes me, I always get asked this question, I think this one would have taken about eight hours, which I know sounds like a long time, but I go very, very, very slowly because if I get at a certain point and I make a, a mistake, a slip, then that's bad news for a few reasons. I, I start all over, which I have done, which is why I go so slow, because I've, I've done it once. <laughs> I don't, you know, when you're five hours deep into a cut and you slip and you have to start all over, 
It's not a mistake you make over again. So I go very, very slowly and just make sure I get exactly what I want. You know, also while we're here, this is the one big work in the show. I thought I would show that I really love working on this scale so that I can cut uh, an incredible amount of detail. Uh, this big work here, for example, I have a lot of works on this scale. And I really like taking my time and getting in the detail of the urn and the flowers, et cetera. In fact, what I'll do in editing is I'll pull up Yoga Duo, where they're balancing with their feet a uh, French horn. That French horn alone, my memory is it took about four and a half hours to cut. Uh, because again, I don't want to make a mistake cut. It's very detailed, very tight. So I just wanted to mention that. Yes, during last Saturday, we had this, this question came in where we were talking and Robert Wood Johnson Jr. did go to one of my solo shows in New York when I was installing the show. He was asking me these great questions. And well, anyway, long story short, uh, he's a big fan of my work. And then a few solo shows later, I was working on, it could have even been this, no, it was a different piece. Uh, and I slipped and I won't go into the details too much. I didn't miscut the work, but I miscut something else. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it was an interesting story about going to Robert Wood Johnson Hospital. And I was talking how I knew this person's boss. And it was just kind of funny. Anyway, moving on. Um, So these are the small playing card size works. And I've seen these hanging on the wall, obviously. I've also seen these on people's mantles. Uh, they're good, what I refer to as covetable size. As I was saying before, I work in sort of rib cage or almost wingspan size. And then I also work on this intimate scale as well. So these cuts don't take nearly, you know, nearly as long. I think maybe just a couple hours. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about how I make these maps before I even start cutting. So, matching a better angle here, right back. Okay, so why don't I bring you a little closer. Okay, this is good. I wanna talk about this work. When I make these map works, the very first thing I do is make the actual map. And that takes days, sometimes weeks, because I go into the digital environment and I draw, you know, with the mouse using the pen tool, I draw blocks, streets, roads, waterways, monuments, etc. And each one of those that I just listed gets its own separate layer in the digital file. And that's what allows me to make different works using the same original source map. For example, this work, I made the water blue and the bricks of Venice, in this case, um, or blocks, I made brick color, right? But then I went back and I made this work. I then cut this work with an X-Acto knife, glued it down to the mat board. But I'm working on a new work where I want the palette to be rose colored. I don't wanna get the glare on it. Rose colored. So I made the water kind of a maroon, blood red, and then I made the blocks pink. And so anyway, it becomes a monochromatic red rose color palette. But then again, I have another work I'm working on where I went to the same original file, and now I have a green monochromatic palette to work with. And so those are the works that I will cut different shapes in. This is another common question. All of these are unique silhouette works. I'm not going to reproduce these two people in this upright base again. That's its own. Uh, but I am making a work involving three people in this rose colored work. Anyway, that is the iteration and generational process of how I make these works. <laughs> 